Namaste. So as we see in Savitri, one angle of approach and a very important angle of approach is about conquest of fate. Not only death, but fate. In fact, if we look at uh, the two, there is a very close alliance. What is death? Death covers up many things in its shroud of darkness. Things we don't know. So, uh, we are shut off as it were in little box. And we don't know what is beyond, we don't know what is above, we don't know what is below, we don't know what is all around. And that's what is called in the language of, in the spiritual parlance, ignorance. And this ignorance is manifold. It's not just that we don't know our souls, yes, that is one part. But we don't know the play of forces. And fate is a challenge which is thrown to us to make us aware. So, when we look at it like that, it's not about bad karma, good karma and the results. But it is about unconsciousness and becoming aware of the, uh, conscious of the forces that move it. And I take this simple example, sometime back when people got blind, so, uh, you know, people would say, oh, it is because of the past karmas. You did some karma, therefore you are blind. But then some people started studying it and they realized it's simply because of vitamin A deficiency. <laughs> so, what is it? We became conscious at a most material level that there is a material cause. And you eliminate it and you are fine. So, but the only difference is that in science we think only of material causes. So, we are never able to completely overcome the sting of fate, the sting of death. But in spiritual um, perspective, we understand that there are many layers of worlds and forces and we must grow conscious of them. And life is for that. It's a wonderful opportunity. So if we look at it like this, we are students all the time learning through everything. And it's a joy to remember that we are student and dangerous to think that I am a teacher. Okay, so... Uh, um, Taradi used to say something very interesting in this regard Those who can do, those who cannot teach Those who cannot teach, teach the teachers So let's not <laughs> So let's always remain a student And be keen to learn always So there is a very interesting passage in Savitri Several interesting passages And um, this was this this is where he speaks about when do we become aware that you know all this that we called as um, bad fate and you know uh, things which are unpleasant what is the secret behind all this so first step is when we know the soul that's where the script is and Shubindu described beautifully in at on page thirty two thirty three. And this is a description of uh, one of the longest passages, not the longest, but a very long passage, where he says, a vast unanimity ended life's debate. What is the debate of life? All the time we are besieged by some conflict. Should I have done this? Should I have done that? Arjuna's debate. Is it the right thing? Is it the wrong thing? And some people who don't live in that, still, if I do this, will I get happiness? If I do this, will I get sorrow? Then life gives another... Uh, googly so you do everything right according to the checklist and then sorrow comes you are a very virtuous man and yet you are defeated you know the story of Pandavas so when do we really get to understand this when does this debate end so here there is a big passage the war of thoughts that fathers the universe the clash of forces struggling to prevail in the tremendous shock that lights a star as in the building of a grain of dust the grooves that turn their dumb ellipse in space ploughed by the seeking of the world's desire the long regurgitations of time's flood the torment edging the dire force of lust that wakes kinetic in earth's dullard slime and carves a personality out of mud. So, the passage is not yet over, but all the challenges of life are to really shape us. This, at one place he says, the shaping God's tremendous touch. We can't bear. So, we say, oh my God. But if you look at it like this, look at what Pandavas had to go through. Why? Because Arjuna had to be prepared to be the great hero in the battlefield. Look at what, uh, you know, uh, all these great ones, even Bhishma for that matter, what he had to go through. We can't imagine a life which uh, where he held as a promise. Yobindo describes him as a great Karmi Yogin. So what these people look at Lord Rama, 
why they went through what they went through. So it is the shaping God's tremendous trust so that they can become strong and supple vehicles for the divine action. This sorrow by which nature's hunger is fed. The marvel of this passage is Shobindo is actually answering <laughs> while he is saying that when the debate ends. So debate ends when we realize that what was this sorrow all about? It was hungering the... Um, it was... Um, Feeding the hunger of nature. So what is the hunger of nature? So that it is never satisfied save the infinite, save the divine. So if we were happy and satisfied with too little, we will live by too little. So it is old program of nature that it keeps feeding hunger. How? By sorrow. So every time we meet a sorrow, we realize there is an imperfection. I thought I have ultimately found happiness. Hurry, I had written a letter, you are my ultimate happiness. And God says, okay, fine. Think about it. After some time, he says, oh, how could I be wrong? Of course you'll be wrong because. <laughs> so then you realize as you grow over a period of time that this was the way nature, nature had to be drawn upward. Now why doesn't this automatically come one day you wake up as a Shukdev, 13 year old, 12 year old or from the womb as they say that no, I know that all this is illusion, ultimately the divine is real. Because then you won't progress, your nature has to grow step by step. So behind it, it's like telling a kindergarten person, you know, all this is relative. So he doesn't say, mommy, school nahi ja kal se. But through the schooling process, his mind develops. Uh, that's why people don't understand during this corona, people were saying, oh, you know, when when children miss school, it was not just studies and curriculum they missed, a very wrong idea. They missed life. They missed meeting people. They missed the organic way through which human beings grow. Uh, school subject is really speaking very of... It has importance, but it's important just to do mental gymnastics, which you can do at home. But this meeting, interacting, falling down, rising up, failing, succeeding, hearing something from teacher that Sabash, and on the other hand, hearing something that, you know, uh, you didn't do well and going through all this is education and they missed all that it's very 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 unfortunate whoever decided the policy couldn't understand that human beings need to grow organically through life and school is not just about schooling so here we get that sense that through all this nature helps us to or God hidden in nature helps us to grow so what is it about and he says the estrus which creates with fire of pain what a term Shrabinda is used with, what perfection. So estrus is called as the, you know, uh, the pain that women experience. And apparently the pain takes the form of a kind of desire. But behind this desire is ultimately nature's play to have a baby who will come out, you know, <laughs> a completely new being. But it takes that form of one kind of desire of, you know. But that estrus, which creates this fire of pain, Pain of longing, pain, physical pain, sometimes they experience. is What is it behind it? It is so that some kind of a new creation can come out. So all these pains are, at another point he says, Earth's pains were the ransom of its prison delight. For only through pain can creation come. Why? Because pain uh, quickens the whole process. If there is no pain, like when mothers uh, reach a point, you know, expectant mothers. So nature creates pain. It's the process that look, now baby is developed. If they don't have pain, there is a problem because the baby won't come out of the womb. So this is a process of nature. The fate that punishes virtue with defeat. Why would it punish virtue with defeat? Because we are not supposed to stop only at virtues and virtuosity. We have to go beyond it. So that's why you see Arjuna has to develop into, go beyond virtues and develop into an instrument of the divine. What he wants him to do, he must do. Regardless of all his mental conceptions. Virtue is a mental conception and goes with vice. All dualities. So it punishes with defeat so that you know this is not something I am missing. And that something which you are missing is, you know, that ascension. And then another very beautiful, the tragedy that destroys long happiness. At another place, Sri says that God drives us out of every Eden 
so that crossing through a desert of morass we arrive at a new heaven so so you see adam and eve were driven from eden they lost their innocence but what they gained is knowledge because there they were living spontaneously there was an eden like that on earth when human beings were just very early stage of humanity very close to the animal kind so the conception of good and bad was not there they didn't taste the fruit of knowledge so they were living by the spontaneous urge in nature which is a very beautiful kind of life at one level but at another level this what they were doing unconsciously instinctively has to be captured consciously and intuitively so the passage is through uh, you know this uh, driving away from eden the tragedy that destroys long happiness the weeping of love the quarrel of the gods seized in a truth which lives in its own light his soul stood free a witness and a king so if you really want to master fate this is the route no tota wala <laughs> parrot wala and hand wala can really tell you a way to master fate fate will find its way that is what bhagavata says beautifully that king is destined to die after 7 days he is a lucky guy he doesn't consult pamist he doesn't consult uh, you know parrot fate he doesn't consult tarot he doesn't consult crystal grazes he asks some wise men this is what is my destiny what do i do should i keep ambulances all around and everything they say no you realize the truth of your own self then you will be free and then there is 7 days bhagavat and after that he says i am ready for whatever come because now he understands what that fate means so this is the path that man must take to overcome his fate then there is on the next page 